I lived in the Sunnyvale house before that. I lived, and I also lived at the dog catch house. So, and I am a hacker, a hacker houseian. And, and this is something. This is a project I've been working on for about a year now, and I actually just finished up a, a huge deadline that I've been working for for the last year, last week, and I'm officially on vacation. So I had um, I had a grant, uh, I had a, a subcontract from a hackerspace consortium, uh, an international consortium of hackerspaces dedicated to uh, long-term sustainability of humans both on and off Earth, their stated goal, and they had a, a large DARPA grant for two years that they were uh, divvying up to smaller projects. And so okay. we've been working There's on that for the last year. And just finished on the up light so the a video photo bioreactor prototype. Here. Just give it a little light so, this is my team. Turn on yeah, turn on the light. So let's see, where should I start here? This is actually this pitch deck I developed for a space conference in San Jose in October. So it's Perfect. definitely geared to a very specific conference. But since I'm on vacation, I didn't change it. So what we're working on is uh, a photobioreactor, and that's a very fancy word. What we have is more like, like a, it's it's more like a robotic aquarium. It's uh, it's a very sophisticated, automated uh, aquarium that keeps some sort of biomass of microorganisms stable for whatever purpose you need, like. Uh, I was actually working at a community lab in Sunnyvale called BioCurious, and I was try trying to genetically engineer algae. And I was spending maybe 20 hours a week just trying to keep our algae uh, culture stable. We had these flasks, and it was just ridiculous. Yes, it was all over the Menlo Park garage. <laughs> it's still there. That's okay, it's no, funny. Well, we never <laughs> and it, it's, it's almost impossible to do, and I started, so I started to realize that this that this new concept of like hobbyist genetic engineering was not going to be possible for anything that didn't grow on a petri dish unless we developed some sort of affordable bioreactor. So the sophistication of the of the system that we're developing, if you if you want to buy it right now from a known company, it usually costs more like a hundred thousand dollars. So what we're actually doing, and at this point have nearly done, is taken the price of bioreactors down by an order of magnitude. So we've got we've got one uh, for definitely less than two thousand dollars, and eventually we'd like to make it for less than a thousand. And it can be used for all sorts of things besides genetic engineering. You can you can use algae to create your own biofuels, uh, to create ethanol, uh, all sorts of really neat biodegradable plastics. Uh, let's see what else. If, if you've ever had a um, <laughs> those naked juice smoothies, yeah. the green, like the green machine, those all have spirulina in them and chlorella, and uh, those are those are algae. Then that's probably what we're going to start out. We'll market our bioreactor to people who want to have really fresh spirulina that they can grow in their garages. So all sorts of really cool things like that. Uh, okay, so at this this conference I was at was a very strange mix of of like the old big wigs in the space community, like um, like like NASA and um, ooh, I'm forgetting if the the people who I'm on vacation. Anyways, all of the old big wigs, and then all of these new startups that are trying to get into the space industry. And what I had to do for this for this pitch was was kind of convince them that this open source hackerspace model is actually viable for creating real companies and that they should take me seriously. So I started out talking about these things. So the conference was actually at the Atmel Corporation and they make uh, a, micro, a microprocessor that Arduino uses. And Arduino, as most of you know here, is, has kind of revolutionized uh, rapid electronics prototyping. And that's what we're using in our bioreactor as well. We talked about, you know, like Maker Faire. It's so what brings together the community of all of these open source people. And then the open source initiative, which has created all of these Creative Commons licensing programs, where you can actually, like, you can put up your stuff on, on for instance, Instructables. 
and you can say, okay, you're allowed to use this as long as you don't have uh, like a commercial interest in it, or you're allowed to use this for a commercial reason, but you can't ever like tie up my own work in IP. So there are all sorts of like rules and regulations to make sure that this is happening in a way that's fair. And uh, and then I wanted to and then made in space is a really cool San Francisco startup there that was talked about a lot at the conference. There, there they've made a 3D printer that actually functions in zero gravity, in microgravity. And they have a contract. It's going to go up on the International Space Station next year. Whoa. And it's not just a 3D, 3D printer. It's an entire like 3D additive manufacturing company. So they have this. And then there's another company that's looking at some metal extrusion on the space station. So you've got all your inorganic materials. But what the space station doesn't have right now is anything that's going to develop uh, organic compounds, and that's where a bioreactor comes in. So, like, mm. my dream is to be able to to put a bioreactor on the space station that will take care of, you know, everything that your three D printer can't do. And uh, but I talked to the Made in Space people when they presented at the conference, and I and I asked them a question afterwards that was key to my pitch, and so everybody heard it. I said how how has the open source community surrounding, uh, surrounding 3D printers influenced what you all have been capable of? And they said, it's everything. They said, if it hadn't been for the original companies like RepRap and MakerBot that released all of their designs completely open source, we would have been able to, to really rapidly recreate all of these open source designs, test all of them in microgravity, figure out what worked, and then within a couple of years have a design that they could put in the space station. Stuff that's not just like cute and hip, but in fact completely necessary to be able to innovate quickly enough to get something on the space station before the government defunds it in like seven years. <laughs> so then I talked more about the open source business model. These are three very successful companies that are currently uh, following this open source model. Uh, a lot of people have heard of DIY drones. They're creating open source, uh, like, quadricopters, basically. And it's actually owned by Chris Anderson, who used to be one of the editors of Wired magazine. And he was so excited about this whole thing that he left Wired to create this. So then 3D Robotics is the exact same group of people, but this is the for-profit side. And they actually have a manufacturing facility that will if you're too lazy to build your own drone from like the 200 different parts that you have to source from all over the world, then they say, okay, we've got a kit and you can just buy it from us. And that's how they're sustainable. Open ROV, they create, um, they make underwater exploration robots, like basically unmanned submarines. They do the same thing. Uh, they release everything open source, but you can buy it from them as a kit if you want as well. And IO Rodeo, uh, all sorts of really cool lab equipment, same model. And they're all you know, completely sustainable businesses. To Kickstarter and the other crowdsourcing platforms. Because all of these businesses start on the crowdsource funding platform. And uh, so, like I, so, I t so I wanted to show these old big wigs in the space community that this stuff is actually successful. So I go through Kicksat, which was a, a CubeSat uh, Kickstarter that, that made uh, $75,000 in like a month. And then OpenROV, which is one of the companies I talked about before, $100,000. Glowing Plant, actually friends of mine, they're creating the first, um, <laughs> they're actually releasing a genetically modified uh, plant that glows in the dark like a firefly. Uh, and they made half a million dollars on Kickstarter. And then planetary resources, they want to get into asteroid mining, so they went to Kickstarter for a, a, a telescope that they would launch into space. And the way, the way they got people excited about it was they said they would use this telescope to, to, you would send a picture of them, and then they would take your selfie with a backdrop of stars. <laughs> Totally worked. They got 1.5 million dollars. <laughs> I know, right? And and so then I said, so I'm not here asking blindly for funding. 
and saying that I already have, you know, I already know what I need to do, what path I need to go down to get my own funding. So I'm not up here just saying, give me money. I'm saying, you know, match my funding. Help me transition from the Kickstarter to, to actually putting this thing on the space station. And uh, I asked for a sponsorship, and I asked for um, a lot more information and a lot more contacts. And, and then the thing they kept saying at the conference was, like, if you have the will and you have the reason, they said, if you have the will, then space is the reason, and we'll show you the way. So then I, that's how I ended. So. It was cool. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully, hopefully I'll be getting a few more.